This is Circuit Valley. I'm Gaurav. Today we are going to create FSPL, the first stage bootloader for this ZC102 board. This is a development board from Xilinx. It uses Zinc Ultrascale Plus CPU. Right now I'm working on a camera project with it. So I'm going to show you how to create FSPL for this particular board. FSPL is the first stage bootloader which runs on the CPU so that it can load further upper stage bootloaders, for example U-Boot and then finally load through U-Boot. You can load the Linux or some other operating system. Creating FSPL turned out to be quite tricky with the new Vitis version. Till now you were able to easily create bootloader with the old Vitis, but the, with the new Vitis there are some tricks which you need to do. First you need to create platform and few other tricks. So we will try to create a bootloader for this particular board with the 2024 Vitis version and we will see how it works. To create FSPL we will get started with the Vitis. I have created an empty workspace and uh, there are other workspaces of course available so first thing you need to do when you're creating fspl you need to create a new component and it's going to be a platform the platform itself you can define platform to be your custom board or whatever in this case i'm using zcu102 so i'll put a zcu102 okay maybe i'll put a platform there i'll do next so here you have two options Either you can use existing platform which you have already created in the workspace we have not created any platform or you can of course choose the zc102 from this fixed hardware as well this is the most convenient way if you are dealing with the xilinx hardware and you don't need to necessarily export any hardware from the vivado and uh, if, if you're using standard that zc102 board then it is the most convenient but if you are having a custom hardware as i have shown you then you can go into Vivado. I'll show you right now. So now the project has built in, so we can export the hardware. And I will choose pre-synthesis. You can also choose include bitstream, whatever you prefer. But you can give the design one wrapper, name, and finish. That's it. And this is the design dot. And this is the file which we will use. So I have chosen one XCA file from my design. And this is a Xilinx default XCA file. And when you go next, it will show you. It'll, it will try to parse this XCA file and get you all the details from the XCA file. It will automatically select the target processor and the platform itself. And we will see how it goes from there. So you have selected already, it has selected already standalone. We don't need to use anything else because it's FSPL and it's directly run bare metal. Target CPU is going to be the first core. Uh, architecture is going to be 16, 64 bit. This generate boot artifact. When you're creating platform, this is supposed to be unselected. Otherwise it creates FSPL and this FSPL is in, not in the FSPL domain. It creates trouble for us. Okay, just to show you, I'll go back once. If you had selected the SCU102, how would it have looked? It would have looked exactly the same and it's no difference at all. So if you're creating custom hardware or anything else, it's the same. We will do for custom hardware, we'll go next and it will parse one more time. Everything is good, we'll do next. So it has given you a warning, then we will see that warning, what does it mean? In the previous versions of Vitis, you were able to easily generate FSPL from the same window or in just one go. And with this update of uh, 2024, this has become a little bit tricky. On the left side, you will see example design. This is the window I clicked right here. This little uh, under the play icon, this icon which you see on the bottom. This is the window I clicked. and you see zinc fsvl example zinc mp fsvl because it's the ultra scale architecture so we have to select the zinc mp if you are dealing with normal zinc or zinc zinc 7000 then you select zinc fsvl not zinc mp fsvl okay so i'll make give it a name It asked me to select a platform. We have already created a platform. And now there's a warning that Zinc FSPL selected domain. So this is the issue why didn't we created this boot artifact there. So we'll select here FSPL underscore domain. And standalone is still correct. And you have to manually select this core number zero. Next, next, finish. Now you have created your FSPL. 
it will take some time and it will generate the needed source code and everything else for you okay so fsbl has been created if you want we can build it so it's done building and it has of course created this fsvl file sorry this elf file this is the elf file which supposed to use and its location i believe is going to be in the build directory so now we will create a boot image to create a boot image we will go to create boot image single task help plus and we will create a new bib file first of all under the same workspace repository and now it will also of course it has already automatically selected the output pin file path as well so now we will add stuff to it add partition first of all you need to add the psfl fsbl binary file so this is the binary file elf and destination ship is going to be a5330 and this is primarily to give us fsbl there are more things you need to add to to the pip file before we can generate fsbl i have downloaded this psp from xiling website and this psp gives me pre-built this psp gives me pre-built uh, components and i will use those pre-built components i will need first of all uh, pmu firmware so i'll select pmu firmware.elf okay destination cpu is the pmu firmware and next i will select i'll select pl31 and then i'll select the uboot image and now at the final time we will load the device tree binary and it is mandatory to select these exceptional levels so for bl31 this must be al3 and for view boot this must be el2 for system dotdb you have to specify the load address something like this now we do create image and image ran and boot image created successfully let's find out how does it look so this is your boot.pin file and this file can be used to boot the system we will copy this file and i'll show you how it works the zco102 board after copying the files and we'll see how it works we'll open the terminal so you see it has booted and here you can see the first stage bootloader is bootloader first stage bootloader is from today and our of course we didn't build the uboot from the scratch so uboot is relatively old which was on the on the bsp side so we got our first stage bootloader working so everything works fine this is how you build first stage bootloader generally you don't need to modify it but sometimes when you use custom configuration which requires clock configuration or certain special things to be configured during the first stage bootloading then you need to modify it so that's it for this video www.circuitvalley.com